Hey folks, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, we've completed our long rest and are ready for another day of adventuring here in the Shadow Cursed Lands. Uh, we've buffed up and got all our camp casting done and all that good stuff. However, before we start today, uh, there's one thing I went into my... Uh, there's one thing I want to deal with. I went into my camp inventory and checked, and we do have three icy spear pieces, or I'm not sure what this is going to make. But we have all three of the Icy Crystal, the Icy Health, and the Icy Metal we've collected in our adventure. So I'm going to combine these and see what we get. Okay, we have the Morning Frost Quarterstaff. Uh... How do I retrieve it? Oh, there it is. It's there in my inventory. Okay. So we've created a uh, very rare quarterstaff for somebody to use. Uh, it's a D8 weapon. I guess it's versatile, so it can be used one-handed as a D6 weapon. Uh, looks like it deals an additional 1D4 cold damage. Heart of Ice. When dealing cold damage, the wielder deals an additional 1. Okay. So theoretically, then, it's 1D4 plus 1. Insidious Cold, dealing cold damage with a spell possibly inflicts Chilled upon the target. Chilled being vulnerable to cold damage resistant to fire. Interesting. It's a plus one quarter staff. Uh, grants the Ray of Frost evocation cantrip. So, very nice. Very interesting. Uh, we have other ways of dealing bludgeoning damage with Tava. This is actually... Uh, more powerful for her two-handed, I suppose, than Faithbreaker. Uh, this is actually a very nice weapon. Any weapon that deals additional damage on top of a plus one uh, is very strong. So, pretty nice, pretty nice, uh, very rare weapon here. Let me just check. So, uh, right now with the Sword of Screams, we're dealing 5 to 12 or... I guess 8 to 18 if you add in some other stuff. If I were to wield this one-handed... Uh, 9 to 17. So instead of 5 to 12, it's 6 to 11. So there's one less damage at the top end, it seems. Uh, but there's a higher minimum damage. Still, uh, for us, for our character who is a savage attacker here, Tava, the better high-end damage is probably the way to go. So we'll stick with the Sword of Screams here. Although, if we chilled someone and they become vulnerable to cold damage on subsequent hits, then that 1d4 plus 1 would double. I don't know, maybe I do want uh, to wield this. It's, it's, a, it's certainly a very nice weapon. It also grants the Ray of Frost evocation cantrip. I wonder... Uh, let's see. He's got a legendary. He's got a very rare weapon. How do we feel like this would work for her? She has advantage from this because it's an invisible weapon. Having advantage on every attack is just too strong to give up. Uh, Shadowheart has a uh, legendary mace here. So, I'm not sure. Should we try this out for a little bit and see how it does? It's one less max damage, and then if we put that chilled condition... Uh... Oh, it's dealing cold damage with a spell. So we'd have to hit somebody with Ray of Frost first and then hit them with this. I don't know. This deals the additional 1d4 Psychic. We're not going to... So Tava wouldn't be casting this evocation cantrip. Uh, I suppose in the rare case where she's using a, raise, a ranged attack, 5 to 14 versus what would it be like? Uh, for her at level 8, it would be 2 to 8. 2 to 16 versus 5 to 14. You know, it's tough because uh, we've got lots of great, great equipment. And this is a very strong item, but I don't know that there's anyone who could use it. Um, 
in the rare case where Astarian needs bludgeoning damage, we gave him a uh, we gave him a uh, a quarter staff once before to use because that was the only thing we had that he could use. Because he only has uh, he doesn't have martial weapons, I don't believe. He only has simple weapons. So maybe we'll send this to him for now, and we'll just keep in mind that we have this awesome, very rare weapon. Anyway, a great find. Uh, really cool that we found the three pieces and recombined them all. I'm just not sure when or how we're going to use this. Uh, so let's send this to Astarian for now, and possibly Will or Gale might use it in the future if we bring them in for some reason. Um, the main reason we bring Will or Gale in is that uh, they have Counterspell, which uh, Shadowheart does not. But with Astarian wielding this uh, this Sasur Dagger, we can silence mages. So I, I don't know. It's not. It's a really nice find. I, I feel re pretty reluctant that we can't get it equipped on someone in this party, but. The items that we have right now are kind of stronger. Never the only one who, the only person who really needs like a rare or very rare weapon is Tava, but we need something that's dealing more damage than the Sword of Screams because she's a frontline damage dealer. So even though it's only an uncommon sword, the fact that this has uh, the D4 Psychic on it, I guess it's not a plus one weapon, is it? I guess that's another thing to consider. You know what? Okay. Let's have her equip this for a while. It's one less max damage, but it does have the plus one, which I didn't consider. And maybe there's some weird situation where she wants to use the cantrip and then gets additional damage from, from, from follow-up hits, right? 8 to 18... Versus 9 to 17. So we lose out on one potential max damage. We do raise our minimum. Not that that's really going to affect her that much as a savage attacker. We gain the Ray of Frost cantrip. And it's got a weapon enchantment plus one on it. So we're more likely to hit. Okay. You know what? We will we will wield this, uh, this quarter staff. So she's going to be doing bludgeoning damage with that. And of course she does have 22 AC. So if we took off the shield. Now it goes up to 9 to 19 again. We get that extra, uh, we get the D8 instead of the D6, so the average damage goes up by one. But no, we'll we'll keep our, our shield equipped. I think one max damage versus plus one to attack is worth it for her. And we'll keep in mind that we can give vulnerability to cold damage if we want to with the Ray of Frost cantrip that she has. Okay, so there's a good eight minutes of me uh, nattering on about, you know, my 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 equipment build choices so i hope you enjoyed that uh we're gonna head out uh on the day and get started with our adventuring day uh just for those of you curious in terms of elixirs we have necrotic resistance on tava uh we have fire resistance on shadow heart uh another colossal elixir of the colossus on carlock and another round of fire resistance on astarian I ran out of um, Greater Arcane for Shadowheart and didn't feel like spending the time to do uh, to do alchemy. I'll do that at the next long rest. We'll do some alchemy on Gale and get, get a couple more of those going. So, taking a look, uh, we have covered a large amount of the... a large amount of the map here. Now, how did I get over here? and then miss this. Or maybe I opened this up on the map but then didn't go there. It does look like I need to get here and then travel there. Um, this we can get rid of. But it looks like there's maybe, maybe a way to jump here or cross here. So let's try and get over down to there for now. Is there any place closer to it? Right, the Shadowed Battlefield is closer. Let's head there. Okay. And then... Where do we want to head from here? All the way down here and to see if we can get over to this, this part of the map that we haven't seen yet. Okay, got it. Let's go. Uh, so most of this should be cleared. We've already been here. Uh, and then we want to keep going around and down. Okay. 
I do like, I do feel pretty good that we've like cleared up or finished up a lot of sub quests. We've like managed a lot of content in the game and gotten all the maps kind of explored and cleared. So I feel like we're doing well in terms of like keeping, keeping progress, keeping ourselves ready to, uh, how do I put this? We're, we're keeping abreast of the difficulty at the moment, which is really good. Like they haven't been touched in a hundred years. Okay, couple of our, a couple of our friends down here are having trouble getting this jump off. How high can we get? Too high. Not enough space. Huh. Shadowheart, can you get up here? We might not need them. All right. Well, I guess I guess we're gonna go forward with just Tava. And uh, Carlock and just check this area out. Maybe is there another way to get there? I don't think so. Unless there's a way over here. Oh, perhaps. Hold on. Keep your distance, darling. Uh, let's try coming over here and making the jump here. What am I to do? Those look like they can get up there. From there, right? Uh, where are you? Why are you not moving? Come on over here. And then where's Shadowheart? You're not moving either for some reason. No time to waste. That was bizarre. If I switch to a Starian, does she stop moving? Delicious. No. There we go. We can get up here. Okay. I've got a long road ahead. Okay, so we're all partied up again. That's good. And we can take a look around. See if this goes anywhere or does anything else besides uh, give us access to this heavy chest here. Bit of gold. A bone. And in the heavy chest, just a couple of arrows. Okay. There's a brazier here. I guess we can light that. And it looks like... Okay, it looks like that's it. It was mostly just that chest, and there's nothing else. No further path or way to go. Uh, so I think we'll head up here now and then curl around. So we'll go explore north of the House of Healing. It looks like Wraithwind Town's the fastest way to get there. And all right, let's head north around the House of Healing. Or maybe we want to come over here somehow. Still alive. Let's see how she navigates her way there. We've been all through these areas, and I'm pretty sure we've seen everything there is to see, fought everything there is to fight, so... Well, hold on, it looks like I was wrong. Odd-looking bones here. A pile of crushed bones of varying shapes, sizes, and creatures. That is odd. What does the plaque say? Here lies the Grand Mason, his bones and lies exposed. His bones and lies exposed. Now the Grand Mason... Okay, it might have been the Sharans who did that to him. Uh, as a punishment for resisting them. Because the Grand Mason, we know, ended up leading the Selenite resistance. And then... Um, not not failing exactly, but they they defeated him, but then later... Once he turned to Shar and cast the curse across the land, maybe perhaps he came back and took his vengeance. All right, so in terms of examining this area, we want to... I don't think there's going to be anything here, but I'll go clear out the corner here. Just to see as much of the map as we can. What is this large... There's some sort of protection over here or something. Way up to the northeast. Uh... Oh, that's the last light. Okay, all right, that makes sense. 
and then we'll head we'll head along this tree route uh, and begin exploring around the house of healing which we we have been in there obviously and seen everything there is to see there we can go around the outside through the cemetery area and see whether there's anything else to find what else have we got here tombstones here lies the best smith in Rythwen. Our swords will never slice as true. Let's see what this does. Here rests Callista Freeclaw, legendary brawler. Died in his sleep, to the surprise of many. Okay. I guess they thought he would die in a brawl, because he was a brawler. But he didn't. He died in his sleep. I guess at the ripe old age of something or other. Why isn't why isn't old age ripe? I guess it means like you weren't you weren't you weren't picked prematurely, right? You weren't uh, unripe. You you lived, you matured, you experienced the sweetness of life. I guess it is a good a good description. Uh, all right, let's crack open these sarcophagus. What do they contain? Undead or treasure? Undead or treasure? It's time for your favorite game show: Undead or Treasure. Uh, today's reward is indeed treasure. This is an Ice Bite Robe, grants resistance to cold damage, and the Armor of Agathis spell. Now that is interesting. If we end up fighting something that, uh, or in an area that has uh, lots of ice damage, we could maybe trade that for the bull Strength. I mean, having, having 20 Strength on her is incredible, for sure. Uh, but Armor of Agathis for a frontline fighter is also a spectacular spectacular thing now of course the problem with it is that she can't rage and maintain concentration on that at the same time but it's a nice it's a nice to have right nice to have in terms of clothing to wear we could also give that to to someone like gale uh to give him that spell because normally only warlocks have it so gale wouldn't have access to that spell except through wearing uh that clothing i'll give up now with haste okay Got a bunch more tombstones over here. Which does worry me about zombies crawling up out of the ground. Taken along with his family on the same grim night. May their deaths be avenged. Oh. So there's one headstone for Brent and then a bunch of headstones for his wife and kids, I guess. That's a little dark. And they don't even they don't even merit their own inscriptions. What about the rest of these? In memory of Warwick Marsh, dearly missed by both of his wives. Dude had two wives? I didn't know the LDS church existed in uh, Faerun. That might be a little bit, that what I said there might have been a little bit, I don't know, prejudice. I, don't, I, I know that there used to be uh, uh, polygamy in the LDS church, but I think that they've mostly stamped it out. I can't, I can't remember. It's, it's ignorance on my part. So if I offended you with that, I'm sorry. Um, looks like mostly what we're exploring here is Violet Goldhammer, beloved singer. May her voice live on in our memories. Yeah, it looks like mostly what we're exploring here is um, graves and tombstones and such. This is slain in battle. They must have a stronghold nearby or a temple. Ah, okay. So she thinks we're near their temple. We've been looking for that for all of Act 2. Um, I think we've been in here. I'm pretty sure we've been in this room, so we don't need to crack that open. I guess we missed the cabinet and the wooden desk there and the wardrobe, but the likelihood that there's anything really good. Yeah, we we opened the painted chest, so we've been in there. I don't see a need really for us to, to crack that. Uh, okay, let's continue this way. Oh, there's somebody alive up here. Oh, it's Raphael, our arch devil. Okay, that's troubling, but he's shown up other places. He, there's not a lot we can do. I mean, I suppose we could try to attack him. We are pretty high level. Uh, has he done anything that we know of? 
did the predators feast? Has he done anything that requires our Oath of Vengeance Paladin to attack him? I mean, just the fact that he's a devil, I would think. But I'm not sure what happens. He probably just... He's like a main story character, sort of, so... He probably just teleports away. Probably as soon as we get near him, it, t it puts us in a cutscene where he's talking to us, and then he leaves before we have a chance to attack him. And I'm guessing he can't be surprised. Watch in the blackest of night. All right, let's go see what he wants. Our hero thought but a treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark she went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which she herself fed. Ooh, spooky! <laughs> My thoughts exactly, Karlock. Uh... How long have you been standing around practicing that little recital? Until it was perfect. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. I can handle myself, Raphael. <laughs> Intrepid as ever. It would be pointless of me to try to buy you from entering. But I can... set the scene, as it were. Prepare you for your role. Fine. Paint me a picture. There is a stage down in the dark upon which a great drama has suspended itself in time. Its actors dwell there still, mired in the languor of their long, tired scenes. If you, however, through the dark, go creeping and awake what is sleeping. Chances are many more graves than yours alone will soon be fed. Uh, why does he care if mortals die? Doesn't he trade, like, he trades in souls, right? Still. Let's see if we can convince him to paint a clearer picture than that. Nice, rolled a 13. He was waiting to be persuaded with a DC 10. Very well. There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. Should it make its way out through the very doors you are about to brazenly swing open, you'll have unleashed a pestilence upon this realm. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. Interesting. So <clears throat> he's not interested in protecting the realm. He's using the fact that we are a paladin or, or like a, a, a good kind of party, a party of mortals that care about fellow mortals, at least in the abstract, if not in the specific. He's trying to manipulate us into uh, defeating his old enemy, right? He wants us to fight and kill it. Uh, I don't think he really thinks we'll be dissuaded from entering, so he's trying to make sure that we attack and kill this thing before it can attack. Maybe it wouldn't even do what he says. He claims it'll go on a rampage and, you know, slaughter a bunch of mortals, but maybe it would, like, make a beeline straight for Raphael and engage him in deadly combat. So I think he's I think he's trying to manipulate us here. Uh Let's go for an insight check here. You're still only telling me half of what you really know. I can tell. Great roll. This creature and I go back a long way. I admit, it would be in my best interest as well, should it remain trapped in the dark. Or misplace its head, perhaps? 
What are we talking here? Lemia? Pit fiend? Orthon? Getting warmer. Warmer. Hot. Hmm. Are you... Afraid of this creature, Raphael. Listen here, Pipsqueak. Do not underestimate this opponent. At best, you will have the blink of an eye to strike. Strike first, strike true, defy the odds, for they are distinctly in its favor. That much I owe the bastard to concede. <laughs> and don't think I've forgotten your tale, Astarian. When the beast is dead, I'll consider that payment enough to translate those scars of yours. A fairer deal than I expected. You wound me, Spawn. I always deal fairly. And will close this particular deal soon enough. Vanquish the beast and all will be revealed. Yeah, so he disappears before we can attack him. Interesting, interesting. Uh, at, with four level eights, like, even a level 16 fiend wouldn't be such a huge, ridiculous, insane, impossible challenge. So they're being very careful not to let us uh, get our hands on him. Okay, so this is very interesting. Obviously, we're curious if this creature is somebody we can speak to we might want to do that just to see if it, it will tell us anything about Raphael that we might be able to use against him uh, but in particular um, Tava as a, as a paladin is happy to slay evil wherever she sees it her her prime motivation is vengeance so she has to know about or witness a crime to really feel like she has no other choice but to go to go into battle um, but Certainly, any any evil creature she's opposed to and happy to happy to fight. Uh, if we discover whatever this thing is, I expect we will kill it. And the good news is, uh, we can help out Astarian with his thing as well. Um, okay, there's a plain unadorned note here: the price of pride. We've actually read this before already. So, it seems the mausoleum entrance is what leads towards that creature. Why don't we just uh, finish up before we actually go in there? Dark Justicius, who fell long attempts ago to restrain in Lady Shah's power and Patrick Thorn. Failed attempts. Uh, why don't we just check over here and just kind of clear out, finish clearing out the map over here? Then we'll double back and see what uh, what's in the mausoleum. Oh, look at this. Selenite robe, a dagger, 17 gold. Moldering graves. Remove curse is pretty nice to have. If we need it, we really need it. A crescent moon earring. Hmm. Curious. Dirt mound right next to a grave. Okay. So little bits of gold, not to anything too exciting or astonishing. Uh, oh, there's a little something back here as well. Interesting. Okay. Is this this is not a dead end. There's more down here. Prime spot for an ambush. Oh. Uh, okay, we've got we've got some enemies down here. Let's see what we're looking at. Cursed Kuatoa. All right, so we've got we've got fish people down here. Uh, these creatures are really interesting because they actually create their own gods. Uh, this counts as a zombie. Very interesting. Shadow Cursed Undead. Uh, drenched. Ambushing. 
Okay, all right. Well, this seems like a pretty good use of turn undead for our girl Shadowheart. Plus, maybe, yeah, it's time for some area effect attacks here. So why don't we start? Let's go into rounds here. Uh, now, interestingly, if she deals cold damage, but that's with a spell, right? What do we have in the way of area effect? She could jump down there and use Repulsor. In terms of magic... That's common. Uh, does she have anything area effecty? I don't think she does, that I recall. She, I know she has the arrows, obviously. And she has a bunch of scrolls. Let's see what we want to do here. If we can open up with a scroll or an arrow. She does have a lot of these. Uh, she has 20, 12 arrows of acid. Um, burning hands, that could be really good here. Uh, gaseous form. Why don't we crack things open with an arrow of acid? Why not, right? Uh, Alright, let's fire off. An arrow of acid to, to start this. That'll hit four of them. That's a good start. Uh, do we want to crit? No, we don't need to crit. There we go. Okay. That's a good start. Uh, Carlock here, I think, also has a bolt of some sort or some sort of arrow. What is this? Roaring Thunder? Yeah, let's... Why not? Let's use one of these. Oh, does, did that not do damage? Oh, you know what I did wrong? I didn't aim it at one of them. I, I you tried to use it as an area thing. I forgot to actually aim at one of them. That's too bad. That's a mistake. Okay. Well, lesson learned. Uh, with those arrows, you do need to hit somebody. Because look, they took they took the area damage from the acid, but none of them actually got like really hit. Uh. So like, yeah, we could use one of these arrows, but we wanna we wanna hit somebody with it. I guess we'll just fire off some arrows at these guys and force them to come to us. Yeah, that's a good turn. Uh, and then you can do the same, I think. Divine Strike Poison? What is this? When did I get this? Is this a spell slot? Where is this coming from? Uh, let's hold off on that. For now. I don't actually know where she's getting that from. Was that on crit? Was that a critical? I don't know what that was. How does she have? How does she have that? Is that a spell that she has, or a or a divinity channel? Oh, it's a, it's a, it must be a new channel divinity that she got. Once per turn, weapon actions. Once per turn, deal one to eight poison damage in addition to your weapon's bludgeoning damage when you make a melee attack. Wait, so that, once per turn? Is that, does that use a channel divinity? I don't know what that is, but, or where she got it from, but I like it. Okay, we'll have to remember that. We'll try it. We'll see whether it burns a spell slot or a, or a channel divinity charge. To keep going. Uh, what is this? You've used your action. You're done. Okay. Let's let these guys go. They were all surprised, so they don't actually get a turn. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. So, let's... Yeah, let's just keep using ranged attacks here. Okay. 
We've got the high ground. So why not? Here we go. There's a kill. Very nice. Uh, let's hit one of these guys. I don't know why it's too dark, but it's it's giving him disadvantage. Spill some blood. Very nice. Shadow heart. I guess we're gonna see how this works. Are they? Do they have any kind of resistance or immunity to poison? Necrotic fire, lightning vulnerability, cold vulnerability. Ooh, cold vulnerability. That's nice to know. Uh, when this thing makes us wet, what does that do? Resistance to fire damage, vulnerable to lightning and cold. All right. Yeah, let's see if we get this divine poison thing again. Okay, so once per turn, we've got two divinity charges, four level one spell slots, two, three. So we've only used one second level. Took an additional five poison damage. It didn't, it must be just a thing we can do now. Uh, guys, if you're watching this and you have some idea where that's coming from for, for Shadowheart, let me know. Did she just get it at level 8, or did I did I put something on her? I don't remember. Anyway, I like it. Well, so much for peace. Uh, Tava, you can do some work on this guy. We definitely do not need to be using our crits here. Wow, low roll. Low roll, leaving him with one hit point. Okay, so that just leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these guys. Let's see what they do. Yeah, this whole group over here I was thinking about was going to dash. But they are undead, so we can definitely... Oh, there's a chief, too. That's interesting. Uh, we can definitely hit them with a with a spirit guardians or a turn undead if, if, they, if things get dicey. But for right now, we just have, like, the high ground. We can, and we saw their ambush, so we can just, like... Go to town on them with ranged attacks. Did he just seriously just throw a net at her? Are you kidding me? All right. Well, let's keep just doing work, I guess. This is good. Uh, he's still alive. I feel like, for for him, it's better to try to get... Yeah, he's not going to get sneak attack on any of these, so whatever. We'll just kill this one. Okay. Man, he is very good at archery. My faith will protect me. Uh, do we want to throw down the... No, not yet. They're not close enough yet. Let's just do work. Throw another poison on? Sure, why not? Uh, you know what we can do, though? We can drop a stage fright on all of these guys. Oh, that's gonna... That's sick. Gives them all disadvantage. Oh, uh, really nice. Really cool turn. Misses and takes 10 damage. Misses and takes 9 damage. Fantastic. So good, so good. All right, uh, now it's time to come right here with Shadowheart and channel Divinity just once to turn undead. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, let's see. For you, we want to get in there and get some kills now because that gives us that bonus action. Uh, let's kill this guy. And then let's kill maybe this guy. And let's take our bonus action to kill this guy. Dope. Uh, you're going to have a sneak attack on one of them, I think. Or no, you won't. Oh, you will. Who's got the most HP? This one? Oh, he had sharpshooter on. That's why he was doing so much damage without sneak. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. 
Less comes easy. And then Tava, you can come in and finish some stuff too, can't you? Oh, she can't... She can't move? Is she locked in by, by a Starion? Well, that's ridiculous. Alright, well. That's fine. They have like two hit points each. Okay, everybody's dead now except the chief, and he's on his own, so he's not going to pose much of a threat. Let's see what he wants to do. Oh, he does have 92 hit points. Good for him. Okay, uh, Carlock, get started. There's 43. There's half his life right there. Uh, let's have, yeah, let's have you move a little bit here, and then let's see how your sneak attack does. Now, why isn't she close enough? Yeah, she doesn't move close enough to gain to gain him that. Damn it, that's annoying. Oh, he missed. That's rough. Uh, I think we go in here with Lathander's light because he's undead. That blinds him. We can do some poison. Pretty good turn. Pretty pretty nice ability on Shadowheart here. I wonder if this is worth the. And then Tava. Honestly, you might be able to kill him just with ranged attacks here. Nine damage. Another ten. Okay, so what does he got? He's got 14 hit points left. Let's see what he does. He is blinded here. Missed Carlock. All right. Uh, Carlock, just finish him off. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, that could have been actually kind of rough if we hadn't noticed their ambush. Like, there, there definitely could have been a little bit of a problem there if they surrounded us. But since we saw them, uh, I also learned that I was using those arrows the wrong way, which is fine. Uh, which is actually good. Um, Alright, let's see what kind of loot these guys have on them. Oh my. Uh, okay, so he's got putrefied tumor, fish, a rusty spear we don't need, and a bit of gold. Uh, let's see what... Are, are each of them carrying around little bits of, of, of stuff I have to, like, manually... Yeah, okay, I'm gonna have to manually handle all of this. Because they've got little, like, little weird sea treasures that are worthless. Mixed in with crap weapons and alchemy ingredients. Uh, alright, so the, the tumors are fine. The chief, what did you have on you? Anything good? Yeah, something a little bit better here. Uh, a big-ass pearl. Very nice. A uh, piece of onyx, an amethyst, and a garnet ring. And uh, a lightning jabber. What is this? A spear? Uh, shocking sting. On hit, possibly shock your target. Throwing lightning damage when launched at a target, deal an additional 1 to 4 lightning damage. So, anything that does additional damage is really worthwhile. It also has a plus 1 weapon enchantment on it. Uh, I'm going to pick this up on Tava and hang on to it for a minute. Uh, yeah. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure, it's not, it's unclear to me if the 1 to 4 is only when you throw it or if it's with melee attacks as well. And then what is this shock condition? Cannot take reactions, has disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws using dexterity. Okay. This is an interesting item to me. We'll pick that up and check that in a bit. The rest of these guys have tumors and trash. The occasional useful food item. Gosh, there was a lot of them, huh? Uh, I misclicked that. There we go. Uh, we've got five more down here to check. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty decent haul. You know, we're getting camp supplies, uh, we're getting gold and, uh, valuables, and, uh, alchemy ingredients. Not sure what the tumors are used to create, but Gale knows. Oops, I missed one. Okay. Uh, taking a look at the map here. Yeah, we're way off. 
to the right here. And then we've got that mausoleum back there. So I think we're pretty close to going in there. We'll just take a quick look around and see if they were protecting anything or if this was just like their home base. Did they come up out of the waters to attack us specifically or is there some other treasure here that we can find? There is a wooden chest. Uh, a smoke powder bomb. That's nice. And then some trash and a bit of gold. There's a note. Let's read the note. I'll give it a shot. Gone fishing. Catch you later, Ellis. Oh, that's awful. What a dumb pun. We do have a painted chest over here. Let's crack into that. Oh, and then there's another. There's a little, there's an ominous crevice. Okay, so this might lead, this might lead towards like the bottom area of the, uh, wherever the devil that, that Raphael wants us to fight is, or it might be a different thing entirely. What do we have here? Elixir of Sea Invisibility. Fantastic. I think we'll give this to... Who could best use that? Maybe Carlock. She's on the front lines. Greater Al Arcane Cultivation is fantastic. I wanted to make one of those for Shadowheart. And then Oil of Diminution. Uh, in terms of bonus actions, that could be good for Carlock. She doesn't have a lot of good bonus actions. Actually, I should take some of... Speaking of that, I should probably take some of Astarian's uh, poisons and stuff and just give a few to Carlock because she doesn't have good bonus actions. And coating her weapon with, you know, a few rounds of basic poison here could be a good thing for her to do. So let's send a few to Carlock here. Um... Now, what else do we want to do here? I guess we want to go check out... We've got a wooden box. We don't need to be up there just yet. I guess we're going to go... Next episode, we're going to go check out this ominous crevice. That's got to be rotten fish, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's cray... Let's take a peek inside. What are we going to do next episode? House of Healing Morgue. Okay, so there's some stuff down here that we've missed somehow. It looks like there's a path down. Uh, and maybe something interesting down here. Uh, that's going to be it for this time, guys. When we come back next time, we'll continue our explorations. We'll go down through this ominous crevice. Uh, we'll head back up and fight whatever devil it is that Raphael warned us about. Uh, there's still lots to do here in the Shadow Curse Lands before we make our way to the uh, Moonrise Towers. But we're a strong, confident adventuring party. We're level 8, you know. Uh, Shadowheart has... Divine poison that she she uses once a turn. So there's that, you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a bunch of fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying the power curve right now. I'm sure things will get more challenging later. But right now, we're just face rolling everything, and I'm loving it. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.